One of our design philosophies was to make a system simple and easy to use. Sample management is a testament to this. Samples are managed by clicking on a material screen. This screen presents you with a list of criteria on which you can search for samples, as well as options to apply to samples in the ribbon control. There are a number of identifiers you can use to search for samples. You can use the sample identifier signed by eLab, identifiers you or others have assigned to samples, and the associated task identifier, container identifier, or name. To enter multiple identifiers, type them in and separate them by a space. If you have a barcode reader, you can scan the values into this text box. If you have an idea of when a sample was either collected or created, you can enter this information here. You can specify the group that is associated with the sample if this information was entered when creating or importing the sample. If you want to limit samples created by a particular user, you can do so here. You can also limit by the type of sample, the samples in a particular project and the recorded volume for a sample. Finally, you can filter by all samples imported into the system during a particular import. Here we have all the RNA samples created by John Smith on the 7th of January 2008. We can view more information on these samples by clicking on the Columns drop-down. We can print the list to a barcode printer by clicking the Label Printer button. Print to a regular printer or we can export the list to the clipboard or an external file for use by another application or an instrument. Here, we will export to Excel. To edit one or more samples, select them, then select the Edit button. For example, here we are changing the volumes of all the samples to 35 microliters. To aliquot one or more samples to another location, use the aliquot button. Here we are aliquoting 10 microliters of RNA to a new container for export to another lab. We can modify the location of the samples as well. To remove samples, again select them and click on the Remove button. To see the history of a particular sample, use the History button. Here we see the sample 42 originated from the plasma sample 41 and has been sequenced. We also see the 10 microliter sample were recently created. To create a new sample, we have two options. We can add them one at a time, or we can import a batch of samples from an Excel file. Here we will add samples manually. To see how to import a batch, view the import tutorial. Enter the details of the sample. To enter your own identifiers, select the Show Identifiers button and add them in the list that appears. Note that you can have multiple identifiers for each sample. In this case, we have an identifier that was assigned from our historical specimen reception system, as well as an identifier assigned by the group that sent us the sample. Select a location for the sample. To add multiple samples, choose the orientation and click the Add and New button. We can also view our search results in Container View. Note, the three samples we just created appear here. To perform work on these samples, we either send them to a work list or a project. Select the samples and then click on the Send to Work List button. Select the users and or groups who will see the samples in their list of work to do. 
choose from the list of protocols appropriate for the sample type selected. In this case, cDNA conversion is the only valid protocol in the database for RNA samples. Modify any other settings and send the samples to the work list. Similarly, we could have sent the samples to a project in order to manage the sequence in which your protocols would be applied to these samples. Reagents, containers and fridges are managed in a similar way to samples and are accessed by clicking on the appropriate toggle button on the top left of the ribbon control. This is the end of this tutorial.